Well, there were several other pieces and evidence from the seafloor. Scientists observe higher heat flow along those ridges than further away. Why would it be hotter right at the mountains and cooler further away from those mid-ocean ridges? The ages of rocks grew progressively older. So we had really young rock at the oceanic ridges and rock got older and older as you went further away from the oceanic ridges. Why? No rocks older than 190 million years old could be found on the seafloor. Now, if you remember from our le lecture in Chapter 2, Earth is 4.6 billion years old. Yet when we look on the seafloor, we find rocks no older than 190 million years old. Where did all those rocks go? What theory explains that? And finally, really none of those observations, the fact that we have mountain ranges, the higher heat flow, the ages of the rock, the lack of old rocks on the seafloor, none of that was really consistent with any idea or any theory that the geologists had at the time. Well, the final piece of the puzzle actually came from further observations on the seafloor. And these observations were based on this. We know we have a north magnetic pole. If you've ever played with a compass, you know that the compass points towards the magnetic north. Well, there's times in Earth's history where the pole switched, when actually, if you had a compass during one of these times, it would point towards the South Pole. And there's reasons for that that we don't need to get into, but these periods of reverse polarity are very important because rocks, when they cool, take on the magnetic orientation that exists at the time. So just like miniature compass needles, when that rock cools, it points north, or, if we're in a period of reverse polarity, it points south. Okay, so again, when rocks cool, they take on the orientation, the magnetic orientation that is, exists at that present time. So if we look at the magnetic orientation of rocks on the seafloor, we find evidence for something called seafloor spreading. In the early 1960s, Harry Hess and Robert Dietz, and these aren't, details aren't so important, but they proposed the idea that actually new seafloor is formed at those oceanic ridges and moves outward from oceanic ridges, what we've called a divergent boundary, as you recall. They had no evidence for that. But when they looked more carefully, what scientists found was if they look at the magnetic orientation of rocks on either side of these oceanic ridges, such as you see in this figure 3.3 here, they're mirror images of each other. Take a closer look here. We have bands of color that represent different ages of rocks, and we have color versus white, which represents polarity. Reverse polarity is in white. Normal sort of situation like we have today is in color, and you can see ages of rock getting older the further away you get from the oceanic ridge, and the polarities change. The only explanation for what scientists call the zebra stripes on the seafloor is that oceanic crust is being formed and spread outwards. And it was really through the discovery of those magnetic stripes on the seafloor um, that the idea of seafloor spreading was confirmed. This idea was first advanced by Ma uh, Vine and Matthews, and Morley, uh, a fellow named Morley, was also in on this. Um, and it really confirmed the idea that oceanic ridges are sites where new seafloor is being formed. Tuzo Wilson, as I mentioned before, uh, introduced transform faults that allow you to connect oceanic ridges with each other, that allow you to connect trenches and ridges, and through all of these different kinds of pieces of evidence, the idea that plate tectonics occurs was really gaining acceptance. Uh, other kinds of things happened. There was evidence for subduction based on uh, earthquake evidence. Um, oceanic trenches made more sense if we thought about them in terms of a moving crust. So all these different pieces of evidence, without putting too fine of a point on it, um, came together in the 1974 
scientists took a submersible down and they actually looked at an oceanic ridge and they found basalt. They actually found evidence of undersea eruption. So, if we look at modern day seismology, we see that earthquakes occur where? They occur on plate boundaries. So all of these pieces of evidence really led to acceptance in 19, late 1960s of the theory of plate tectonics. And even today, this is a, a map of um, seismology through uh, 2008, June of 2008. Here we see where earthquakes occur. They outline the plate boundaries. Isn't that beautiful? Today, because we have satellites and we have global positioning systems, we can actually watch the plates move. And these arrows, this is a, a NASA figure, indicate the direction of motion and how fast the plates are moving. So here we see Australia moving this way. Here we see Orange County moving this direction. Here we see Asia moving in this direction. We can actually see the plates moving. So what more evidence do you need? We actually can watch the plates moving. So in modern times, the theory of plate tectonics is accepted really without question. There's no other explanation for our continents moving about, especially when we can see them move about. So putting it all together again, this figure that I showed you in the last lecture, new oceanic crust is formed at oceanic ridges. It spreads outward. It's subducted in one of three different types of boundaries, of convergent boundaries, oceanic continental convergence, oceanic, oceanic convergence, and also not shown here is a continental, continental convergence, where two plates come together. Transform faults connect these. And in this whole process, we have formation of island arcs, formation of continental volcanoes, formation of oceanic trenches, and of course the formation of the oceanic ridges as well. And all of these different processes, all of these different locations spawn earthquakes. So volcanoes, earthquakes, trenches, ridges, mountain ranges, seamounts, hotspots, all are explained by this all-encompassing theory, albeit a simple theory, that Earth's crust is divided into plates that move relative to each other.